Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. In today's video, I talk about how INFJs can get better at managing criticism. So, INFJs are one of the most sensitive to criticism. Now we're going to talk about why that is. INFJs lead with extroverted feeling, and uh, it's one of their stronger cognitive functions, their auxiliary function. And this function makes them very much focused on the needs of the other person. INFJs are a need, a feel a desire to connect with and understand other people. It makes INFJs feel good to feel that they are on the same page as another person. That means that when an INFJ receives criticism, they are very, very eager to accept it as the truth, no matter whether it's accurate or not. INFJs present very few boundaries in terms of social engagement. INFJs want other people to feel that they can be who they are and say what they feel. And so INFJs allow and give other people space to be critical and to be negative and to be harsh because INFJs will say that that is being authentic. The INFJ wants people to be authentic, to be honest. So. What INFJs struggle with is, even if they want people to be authentic, and even if they want people to be honest, it's hard for INFJs to manage social criticism. It's hard for INFJs to deal with and understand and accept criticism. This is not just because INFJs are immature or uh, that they don't want to listen or that they are uh, refusing to be taken on accountability. Uh, it's the opposite of it. INFJs are hyper-responsible. However, as human beings, it's very hard for us to address and improve from criticism. How does anyone ever improve at anything? How does anyone ever change anything? The INFJ might want to get along with you and might want to listen to you and might want to do what you say and tell them to do. However, they might not know how. And so if the INFJ does not know how to connect with you and how to meet your needs and how to be there for you, the INFJ might become overwhelmed or anxious and they might feel like they are failing you and that they are not able to be the person you need them to be. And so the INFJ might decide that, hey, this person doesn't benefit from my company, I can't meet their needs. So in order for me to be good for them and to help them, I have to let go of them and let them find somebody that better suits them and what they want. Now the other person might go, hey, 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 wait a minute. It's okay. Like I just wanted to point this out and it was not that important to me, you know, and if you can't do it, okay, sure, I understand, you know, but the INFJ might have already made that snap call in their head and might be like, okay, yeah, I'm a, I'm a disappointment. Yeah, that's it, I guess. Well, can't do anything about that, I guess. Now, the thing is, uh, we all need an appropriate difficulty level setting, you know? How do you teach a two-year-old kid to clean their room, you know? They can't, you know? Uh, like, at best, you can, might get them to be able to lift something up, and that's already gonna be an impressive achievement, you know? <laughs> uh, so, we have to all start somewhere, and you know, when you're looking at an INFJ, some of them might have uh, developed to have superhuman skills and abilities in some regards and they might have weaknesses and issues in other regards. So like all human beings, none of us are perfect. You know, it might be that your partner doesn't take out the trash. It might be that they don't uh, communicate well, but no matter what it is, you have to start breaking it down to parts. So you need your partner to communicate better. Okay, the INFJ clearly wants to communicate better and wants to improve that. How do you need them com to communicate with you in practice? Okay, you need the INFJ to be more responsive or to give you more attention. Yeah, but the INFJ has a limited amount of energy. How do you expect them to do that? And in what regard do you need attention and in which way? And how can we help each other meet each other's needs? If the INFJ needs alone time and if you need attention, how can you make sure that you both are happy? Conflicts are hard and we don't always know the appropriate solution to anything. So we need to both think about what to do. As an INFJ, what is most important is that you accept that everything you do has a cost for you as a person. So 
even if people give you criticism, you can't expect yourself to immediately meet their demands or to be or to fulfill what they expect of you. And you can't go too far in trying to connect with the other person. So what can you do as an INFJ when you get difficult criticism? Well, the first thing you can do is you can say, hey, this is difficult for me. I hear that that's important for you, but that's a hard thing for me to do. Or is there anything I can do to meet you halfway? Or can you think with me on how we can resolve it? This is why it can be hard for me to do that. With that in mind, it should be a lot easier for you to stay connected to your partner and to maintain a healthy degree of teamwork. Because ultimately, relationships are a two-person game. You are both responsible for putting in effort and for making things work. And it's ultimately up to the both of you to fix the problem together.